What is up, YouTube? My Cowboys family here bringing you guys the latest update on our very own Dallas Cowboys. And of course, as always, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Take a second to hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow us on all social media at My Cowboys Family. And of course, hop in the Discord link for that it's in the description box down below. And right, guys, hey, the two weeks of. People leading the boards and switching mm -hmm. back and forth. And and tonight we will crown some champions, guys, after two weeks here on MCF. Now, it's been a little light here on the My Cowboys family side because it's not much it's a lot light news, guys, when it comes to the Cowboys and updates. You checked out our most recent short, you'll kind of see why, yeah, right? Yeah, ain't doing nothing. So, guys, tonight, Cowboy Quickie. Because there ain't much out there, but enough to just discuss a little bit and finish up the week, crown some champions. You know how we do. So as we get into this thing, guys, hit the like, subscribe, and the bell. But let's go talking. Before we get to the news info and updates, let's get talking to those that represent this board and have been doing it for this last two weeks. This streak of two weeks is our sponsor of the week and the king of the cash app, none other than Harley Dad. Woo. Much love to him. He represented big time on the after dark side of things. and He dominated it. Two weeks ago, and holding that crown for two weeks since we had a, a you know a stretched out week this time. So appreciate Harley Dad as always, and of course Jason Renfro always in the mix. He's got 82 points on the stream, boss, repping it there, and the man staying skeptical. Skeptical fan as our membership gifting king for the last two weeks, and he's actually got it back to back like our 90s Cowboys. So big shout out to skeptical fan again, always staying skeptical. Now, who's leading these boards? Well, Jason Renfro got the stream boss, and he's also got a 5-1 to one lead over Skeptical Fan in the last two weeks. So we'll see if anybody in the membership can pass them. They need six on it. You know, Skeptical would need four to tie, five to pass them. We'll see what happens when it comes to the gifting membership side of things, which is one of the best ways to help out the channel. And then if you look at the Cash App side, well, it's someone that we know very well here. has been representing the boards about six out of the last eight weeks, maybe six out of the last you know, month and a half out of the last two months, somewhere on this board, and it's the man, McLovin. Woo. Much love to McLovin, who is not just a cash app leader after these two weeks and might get that crown tomorrow officially, but he's also the sponsor of the week. You know, I'd say, let me say, he's not the sponsor of the week. Harley Dad's sponsor of the week. He's the guy ready to take that crown, take that sponsor of the week tomorrow he is also in the lead there on the overall board. You can see him right there. First place, McLovin. Second, Sko971. Marissa Sparkle in third. Jason Renfro in fourth. So, again, appreciate everybody on the love, whether it's here or on the After Dark session. Yeah, McLovin currently is the man in first place. And remember, this gives you a little bit of a bonus when it comes to, if he holds it down tonight, if he's the weekly winner, he's going to be involved. He's going to get a, member, a, a, a uh, raffle entry into this monthly jersey raffle where it just, you know, star level and over everything automatically entered. 
uh, over everything get an extra bonus raffle and the weekly winners get a bonus entry so hey we'll see what happens we'll get back to that in a minute but i wanted to also discuss baby those that have dropped the love in the last day and a half or so whether after dark or, or right here on, on mcf so we have uh you know daniel berry sports much love to you sco 971 marissa sparkle dan uh i'm sorry uh grateful nomad we have scorpio much love to him and don't forget mclovin yeah, he dropped the loving as well. Uh, so appreciate him over the last two days. Or I said, you know, let's say what? The weekend, right? We had, uh, you know, some after dark sessions. These are the people that dropped the love. Also, Darren Posey back in the Navy Blue crew right here in MCF. So thank you. And much love to everybody in those levels. Navy Blue, Silver Star, and over everything. Um, <clears throat> there's different ways to attack the boards here. You got the super chats. Easy, mm -hmm. easy. You know, easy to, to drop those in the, in the YouTube side of things. You have the thanks button. You, you can jump in the memberships like Darren Posey today, back in the membership of the Navy Blue. Or you can gift memberships like Jason Renfro, skeptical fan, I've done. But there's four of the ways you can try to attack Harley Dad's crown. McLovin right now, the top spot. How do you get to that spot of things? Cash app side. Well, there's four specific ways. That uh, and again, after dark is the way they're going. That's why you're seeing the, the the winners also being the cash app crown because they're going through this side of things. Maybe give them the other ways they can drop the love. Well, of course, you have the cash app money sign my cowboys family, the Venmo at my dash cowboys dash family, the regular PayPal link, and of course, last but not least, that Streamlabs link lets your comment show up on screen just like a super chat. Damn right. And like we said, guys. All those ways get you, you know, can get you the weekly winner, get you in the raffle for a sewn and stitched jersey. Any team, guys, a lot of players for every team, but we know how we rep it here. Cowboys is always first and foremost. We never actually have given out a jersey of any other team. Even we've had other winners from other teams on mm -hmm. here. So, uh, sewn and stitched jersey, different styles, sizes, the whole thing from different eras. Cowboys, there's like 40 different choices to choose from. So, you know, winners will not be uh, disappointed for sure. So, again, star and over everything the month of April. The raffle coming at the end of the month. And we're going to have a weekly winner here now. And said, looks like if it's McLovin, he'll be in this raffle along with all the star and over everything level members. Speaking of, they get their nightly shout outs, baby. And uh, I'll let you do the honors here and shout out those that rep the top. The navy blue and silver, fantastic. But we got that top shelf star and over everything boards. Thank you very much to Skeptical Fan, Jason Renfro, Lincoln Kane, Mary Alvarez, Marissa Sparkle, Dwayne Broussard, De Lunatic, and Over Everything, Seabass. Yeah, Seabass. Much love to him, and he will be appearing hopefully sooner or later on That's the show. Right. So just make sure you send us an email and get us some dates you can get on the show. We'll let you know as well, and we'll figure it out. So again, everybody... No, this, is a, this is the politeness is done there, the, the intros. and uh, now it's time to give the love and the shout-outs to everybody yes. here chilling, hanging with us Who tonight. Who is in the house with us on this two-week closer as we have our cartoon faces up here? There brought to you by the great skeptical <laughs> fan and his side of things. Uh, who's in the house tonight? Radio Rock and Roll and a Cowboy Quickie. There we go. We have the man... C. Bass himself, who said, by the way, he's actually available these next two upcoming weekends. So, perfect. Uh, no, we'll, 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 we'll hit you, you up uh, after the show well, here next, tonight. Yeah, and just, tonight and just work out the yeah. actual like, little, you know. Yeah, we'll get the details for sure. Tonight, tomorrow, we'll get back to you and work out for next but weekend, perfect. right? Yeah, it looks good. It looks so, good. So, Stephen White in the house. What's up? Much love. Rolando Rodriguez representing. Yeah. Um, our Cowboys are definitely, uh, I guess, chilling at the pool, I guess, mm, right? Yeah. Marco Seppi and a big hey. Mahalo to you saying, is Mr. MCF at the <laughs> nudie bar again? Just the after dark bar. Not without me. Uh, <laughs> uh, she'd be there right next to me, trust me. And uh, uh, we go to the after dark <laughs> bars now, I think. Oh, Daniel Berry Sports, what's up? Much love. <laughs> Brandon J, hello and hi. We have, let's see who else is here. Do, do, do MCF After Dark. Who is that? I don't know. I have to check him out tonight. John Syme, what's up? Uh, yeah, like uh, McLovin was saying earlier there. Yeah, the clocks do run a little differently in Florida, if you've noticed. Uh, things <laughs> always seem to run a little bit behind here uh, in our uh, sunshine state. Larry, what's up? Formerly known as Mr. Wright, of course. In the house. Thanks for coming on through here. Freedom First, looks like you were first. Good for you, Ooh. man. So, let me see... 
Yeah, I, I hear you know after dark gets a little bit of uh, gets crazy sometimes. A little bit of rowdy. Yeah, yeah you, but hey, <laughs> not, it's not for the faint hearted. It's <laughs> no, not for no. the faint hearted. That's for sure. Oh come on, that was such a good joke. <laughs> what I missed it. What did I miss? MCF after dark gets rowdy. Oh, uh, I see you using the cowboy like connection. Our, there you yeah, go. I, I got it. Thank I just thank you. I, when I'm over there, I don't think thinking about cowboys. I'm thinking about that's why it was everything. Funny. But I, I get it. I get the connection. Baby. Anyway. Unfortunately, most people in the chat that aren't cowboy fans don't get it. like McLovin in the house. I see him in here. He says a dirty place. I hear it is dirty. Usually because Smokey is flo floating around, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, McLovin. Smokey's floating around. Things are just, things are tainted. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Mike Aldana, what's up? Much love. Thanks for being here, hanging with us. So, baby, again, I, I know it's a bit of a cowboy quickie, so let's go ahead, you know, Very and quickly, quick. yes. you know, Remember, dive right into. We got ourselves, uh, I got myself in, uh, in about an hour, maybe even a little more. It says 2 o'clock a.m. Guys, if I push you back to 210, you will live. Uh, but, yeah, you know, going to go live after dark on a quickie over there. Two quickies back to, we're going to go bang, bang. Hmm. Going to get them real quick and done, in and out. So, this is actually basketball information. I just found this out today. Not even I wasn't even planning to talk about it. Oh, although I'll talk about this. A two dollar drop from Jason Renfro, two dollar oh. holler, J Lou two. What did the man say? <laughs> he said bobbleheads up now. <laughs> Go cowboys. Go cowboys. Appreciate you, Jason, as always. And he powers up to eighty four points on the stream box. Yes, and by the way, extra special shout out to my skeptical fan because uh could not be bobbleheads without Yeah, exactly. Him. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, I, I lost my ability to do the up, you know, the shaking, uh, talking version of me here. So I can't do that right now. We're trying to, Discord's giving us issues. But on top of that, yes, the bobbleheads, the, the, the you know, yes. the caricatures are out. So anyways, uh, NBA is a, you know, I actually, you know, follow my Chicago Bulls. Yes. And unfortunately, they been sucking it real bad kind of like the cowboys <laughs> uh, since those the 90s but um you know i'm gonna watch the play-in game it's a tournament he, the, the bulls are the ninth seed right here and they're playing the, the atlanta uh you know hawks <laughs> as the 10th seed so the winner of that game avoids elimination i'm watching that on wednesday april 17th 9 30 p.m eastern time on espn that's what i'm gonna be doing at that time and place <coughs> uh, watching the, the the Hawks take on the Bulls. If the Bulls lose, it's over. If they win, they play the loser of the Miami Philadelphia game, which is the seventh and eighth game there. And uh, oh, the winner automatically gets the seventh seed of that game, <coughs> which will also be on uh, April seventeenth. And then if the Bulls can win, they will get the loser of that game. And then the winner of that game will then go to that eighth seed spot. That's the way the new kind of play in tournament. I like the tournament, the play in tournament schedule. It's like a one and you're out, but if you win, you have a, you can survive or you get into the play, you know, you get into that playoff, uh, the actual real 18 playoff, although they take 10 teams here. Same thing in the West. interesting how a lot of the major sports are kind of adjusting their playoff situations recently, huh? Yeah. Yeah, just throwing that out there. Yeah, for sure. And you know, Western Conference has the Lakers and, and New Orleans Pelicans, or what, what are they now? The New Orleans, they're playing that seven eight game. The winner makes the you know makes the playoffs, and then the loser will play the winner of the Golden State. Believe it or not, Golden State with Stephon Curry. Hmm. Right now, they're hanging on. They're like the Bulls right now yeah. in the ninth seed of the Western Conference. They'll play Sacramento. They would have to win that game and then beat the loser of the Lakers New Orleans game to get in. So. I guess I'm going for the Bulls, and I guess this is Golden State, you know, getting in there uh, as the both those would be the eighth seeds on each side of things. Anyways, basketball, whatever, right? Let's talk about football and NFL news, which again, this is uh, uh, somehow draws in the Cowboys all the time. We always getting drawn into this, and I didn't want to. This was out yesterday. I wasn't even talk about it, but listen to this, baby. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, the San Francisco 49er wide receiver. Supposedly, multiple sources, supposedly, I'm putting this in quotes, air quotes, Brandon Ayuk supposedly wanted to be traded. He requested a trade from the Niners, and this is from multiple sources, but the main guy said, hey, this is from my San Francisco source. Okay. Yeah, he said, Benjamin Albright and the 49ers Sports Talk have done some preliminary reporting on this story already. As of Sunday morning, April 14th, the Steelers... Have been doing the most aggressive. Have been the most aggressive in pursuing a trade for Ayuk, with the Ravens also expressing interest. This guy's source also said that there's a third mystery team out there that is coming in strong for Ayuk, but they refuse to, to divulge any thir further information. Now, before this, a day before this, we knew the Steelers were involved in this. We knew that the we didn't hear about the Ravens. That's kind of new. 
But we heard the Giants are involved, and of course the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. They always throwing us in the mix somehow. There's no word that the Cowboys are actually truly involved in this. Now that's number one. That's the first part of this. The second part of this today, Mike Garofalo, who's a trusted source, NFL source, said today that Brandon Ayuk's agent denies that his client has requested any kind of trade from the Niners. And he's gonna, you know, he's willing to play with the Niners this year. So a lot of interesting, kind of weird stories going out. I think it's more about the source was false. That seems to be the issue, um, okay. and some people ran with that. So that's why we could talk about this yesterday. So, so some bullshit clickbaiter, yeah, you know. fooled some of the bigger name networks, and mm-hmm. then they, they got it straight. I mean, again, or Ayuka's lying, and he's just like, you know, I want to get traded, but tell everybody I'm not getting traded, you know, and we'll make me look like I'm still all right. Guy. I don't know. Either way. The main thing connected for me is that the Cowboys are connected here. Exactly. And the Cowboys being connected, it's like, okay, I, I hear that. I know it's usually bull crap. And, of course, it's 100% bull crap. Not just uh, that the Cowboys are, you know, not interested at all. But, it's you know, they say that the Cowboys were interested. That's bull. The Cowboys are not interested. And neither were, supposedly, anybody interested because there is no trade currently on the table out there for Brandon Ayuk. So I appreciate the optimism of the people who believed that it could have been true in the sense that, man... Cowboys making a move. Who would have yeah. thunk it? You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's that's the number one reason why I would have been like, really? Yeah, we, we we've, seen before, we've seen this story before though. We've seen this story before though. Any guy that has any kind of name, whether they do it, the media does it, that the star is always put next to the guy as yeah. a possible option. Scorpio said it. Only way for that article to get views is to have anything Cowboys Correct. related in it. Correct. And Thomas Garrett, much love. Yeah. The, so, but yeah, it, it, like we said, nothing new here. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, so they're gonna find a way to, you know, make uh, Jerry Jones's like sandwich order relate to <laughs> something just in order to throw the Cowboys into things. Listen, so. here's the deal. Just so everyone gets it clear, it looks like Brandon Ayuk did not ask or request for a trade, okay. and it looks like the Cowboys are not one of the teams involved. I mean, the Steelers were the one that I heard the most, but even that don't seem like it's gonna happen. So, just being real about this, it seems like. There is no uh, no no Brandon Ayuk trade on the horizon mm-hmm. yet, and it just seems like you know no one's clamoring you know basically claiming anything different than that. So and John Simon said it Ayuk would cost way too much exactly. for the Cowboys to even think about going. Right, it's not just trading like trading for like a picks. I said that the other day we better trade a a fourth a third round. I mean we have to trade, I would say a third rounder or less, and then he he wants to get paid. You know so no I'd rather get a third round rookie. Than getting Brandon Ayuk for the third, you know, a third round. If we're gonna use a, a draft pick on a third round receiver, oh well, let's you give it up and get Brandon Ayuk, but then you gotta pay the guy, and that's gonna be the thing that's that's the no go. So no matter how you slice, we don't have we don't have the the trade, you know, uh, capital. Yeah, the Cowboys don't believe in the draft to play. You know, uh, they, the draft, or trade to we don't have enough draft capital for trade up for trade up or trading away for a guy like this, and then paying him it ain't happening. It ain't happening. Let's yeah. be honest. So uh, the the last player in recent memory the Cowboys did that for is well the last player in recent memory that the Cowboys will probably do that for and that's Amari Cooper mm, yeah. in the sense of we not only traded draft capital right but then we turned around and actually paid him a substantial contract yeah. a significant amount of money yeah. you know then and back that's up. real we were surprised last year when the Cowboys went after you know cooks and um well yeah but that was but again remember those were trades i know and it's different but that's what I'm saying. I, I know like, we're talking about trades just, even just with yeah. trades just that alone even with the numbers attached to those two guys you know what i mean it's not like they were getting paid you know crazy money or anything but even for the cowboys we were like yeah. okay that's but that's that's that, 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 that's why i think i said before that was like that's now that look back that was the cowboys all in that's the way jerry jones went all i know in. we should have known no more all this in. year we yeah. we went like so, so far backwards in the opposite direction. But even like, I can say Brandon Ayuk's not worth trading for and then paying for. I'd rather go get you know a guy like T. Higgins who, or Tyler Boyd is out there. You know, T. Higgins is a lot harder because he's a big name guy. The Tyler Boyd you get for cheap. But let me just go with the T. Higgins for a second. You know, mm-hmm. he's the last I think franchise. Well, it's two guys, but he's the, he's the guy that's really the farthest from being uh, one of the franchise play franchise tag players that is going to sign a, 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 a contract soon. Although now we're hearing something new from him. Now the, the, the Bengals franchise tagged wide receiver T. Higgins, who again, guys, requested to be traded last month. He's on the franchise. He doesn't want to play with Cincinnati because of the, they're not going to pay him and they're not going to trade him. Now anticipates playing for the Cincinnati Bengals in 2024. This is what he told reporters today at his youth football camp. 
So I guess we, I guess he's staying right now. T Higgins going to play on that franchise tag or get a deal. That looks like where yeah. it's going with that. So that's it looks like everybody that's franchise tagged is going to get. There's two guys left, and they're both on the way to deals. That's what it looks like. Now, let's talk our Cowboys. Micah Parsons, he was not playing basketball. He was not playing football. He was at a basketball game, hmm. and Jason Ruff was right here dropping that two dollar and seventy cent uh, holla. He's not playing around either. Thank mm. you so much, Jason. With a go Cowboys. Hell yeah. You I mean appreciate a, you, of course. Oh, you mean a go <laughs> Cowboys. Hell yeah. Appreciate you, Jason. And uh, he's still building up. 87 points. He's got a Ferguson up there on the stream, boss. Mm, so delicious. <laughs> Micah Parsons, guys, was at the San Antonio Spurs game last night. Of course, they have a fan- phenomenal w- rookie, Wemben Yama. All right, and this guy is like, uh, I mean, for, for Halloween, he was, uh, what was the, the Slenderman, mm. right? So the guy is, looks like a, I mean, they call him the alien. So it was interesting. Michael Parsons, uh, after the game, uh, met with Victor Wembanyama, and they linked up after that Spurs-Denver Nuggets game last night in San Antonio. Basically, it's the alien, you know, meeting the lion. Alien versus the predator. Yeah, it feels like that, right? Exactly. Alien versus the lion in this situation. Uh, so, again, as you can see, and again, I'll give you this picture. You see there, the huge, I mean, he's like seven, he's like seven, seven or something like that. He's huge. Tall guy, seven, I mean, maybe seven, two. Yeah, he makes seven. Micah look like a toddler. Yeah, he's, but he dribbles like, you know, like the best dribblers in the league. So, again, this guy is an amazing player. Uh, but, yeah, he makes Micah look like a like an like a infant. So, there you go. And you got the, that's a little, that's the news we're getting you right now, guy. That's the, all the news is out there. So our players, you know, checking out a basketball game and hanging out with some freaks of nature, two freaks of nature here, Michael Parsons and and uh, and Wemby. So, again, you can say a first encounter of a lying meeting an alien ever recorded. It's official. Now, now I also want to give a little shout out here to somebody else uh, grinding. <laughs> Grinding. That might be my song tonight for uh, for After Dark. Because Rico Dowdle, he's been grinding. We talked we talked about Dak and others grinding, doing some working out and stuff like this, workouts. Rico Dowdle is in the lab now, back again, guys. The fifth year running back, who's currently our starter, right, at this moment, our number one guy, currently the our leading rusher coming off a career season. Of course it's Rico Dowdle, but again, uh, he is back there again. I'll probably post tomorrow the video of him kind of doing some some work, um, you know, looking to be right at it again. I, I look for good things with him. I know he had that hip issue twice in a row, so that's the only thing that scares me about Rico Dowdle. But outside of that, the man seems you know and fumbling the ball. That's one of the things he did in preseason. But he didn't do it in the regular season, so he will have a place on this team. Just I don't think a starter is what fits him on this. But he had 505 total yards from scrimmage. Rushing and receiving last year with four touchdowns associated with those with those 505 yards, he had a, a PFF elusive rating of 59.1 in uh, 2023, which was the 25th best among all running backs. So not the best, but far from the worst. And again, he's going to be our second guy on this team. He's out there putting in the work right now. Let's put let's talk about the guy who's putting in the work at the QB position right here. And that's Dak Prescott. Now Dak Prescott. You see our cover. You see a thumbnail that has him and McCarthy. And to me, it's kind of like, it's kind of a funny face that Dak's got on because to me, he's kind of focusing on like, what the fuck are you talking about, Mike? Mm-hmm. You know, Coach McCarthy. And of course, we know about Kellen Moore as his coordinator. And we had Garrett back there. We had Leonard. Listen, Dak Prescott, let me just say what, what the coaching, like, like Tom Brady had Bill Belichick around him. I mean, almost every player said that's the greatest coach ever that they've that they had coached them. Jason Garrett, who was his first coach out of the NFL? No, not, not another team thriving. He's at, not a very good coach. Would you agree? I agree. Scott Lenahan, where is he at? Out of the league, as well. Nowhere. No, no place in the NFL. Kellen Moore, he's in Philadelphia, but he was at Dallas two years ago. Chargers last. Now he's a Philly. He had his third team in three years for Kellen Moore. Schottenheimer, who's our current offensive coordinator. Fired by multiple teams. I mean, back to Seattle is probably his best run. Even that was hor- was pretty ugly. Yeah. So him as a play calling offensive coordinator, horrible. Fired multiple times. And let's just be real, the big bubble. Mike McCarthy you know, had a great, you know, interesting start. You know, a little rough in the beginning, but then got on track with guys like Favre and Rodgers, and won the Super Bowl in 2010 and 2011. Um, fired by the Packers six years later. Because why? 
offense was outdated. Yep. So, again, not that McCarthy's a bad coach or can't help Dak. It wasn't like some of these other coaches couldn't help Dak Prescott. But these are the coaches that Dak worked with his entire career. And I'm sorry, guys. Jason Garrett, Scott Lenahan, out of the league. They're, they're not the best football coaches. And Lenahan, again, had a little bit of success earlier in his career. But he, again, the offense he was using when Dak was here was horrible. The scheme. Garrett, horrible. Kellen Moore, we know how bad that has been. Um, <laughs> Schottenheimer, you know, to me, it's really McCarthy's offense, and it was bad in the beginning. McCarthy got on the same page with Dak after that, that, that Rams game, basically, uh, week six, seven last year. But still, Sean Hummer, you know, fired multiple coaches. McCarthy was fired because he had an outdated offense. Is he getting the offense back to date? I don't know yet, you know? So these are, I'm just saying, these are the guys offensively that Dak has surrounded, has been around, surrounded himself. He had John Kitna as a quarterback coach but and helped him, but he's now coaching in, like, high school. My point is that these these guys around them are not necessarily thriving anywhere else, and they've been fired multiple times. We're coming here, so it's not. Dak has his issues, and I've talked about him t- taking over a game or whatever it may be. But Dak has, you know, Dak's been taught by some crappy coaches at some crappy portions of their career. You know what I mean? So I don't know what you think about this, but I'll tell you one last fact about all of this. Even with these coaches that were subpar. Fired multiple times in the previously fired nowhere in the league now. If even after all that, and really let's look at the last three years, I guess that include that really that really is more, you know, Kellen Moore, Schottenheimer, McCarthy. Mm-hmm. All right, the last three years, even with these guys there that maybe aren't the best coaches for yeah, at this point of their careers, first quarter touchdowns scored in the last three years, the Dallas Cowboys are number one. Believe it or not, we we bring a little criticism, even with Kellen Moore, how bad we start in games. 44 touchdowns in the last three years in the first quarter. Not just starting, but saying the entire first quarter, we have a total of 44. You know who's next on the list? The Chiefs with 37. Mm. Eagles have 34. The Bills have uh, the Bills, the, the, the Niners, the Colts, and the Dolphins have 32. Detroit has 31. Seattle, Cincinnati, 29. And, and down they go the list. My point is, by far, the Cowboys have scored the most touchdowns in the first quarter in the NFL in the last three seasons. Mm-hmm. Yet, is that the coaching? Obviously, the coaching lacks. So, Dak, what I'm saying is Dak overcame the coaching to be able to to get the Cowboy offense. And, and it's not just Dak. It's the entire offense. The receivers, the running backs, the scheme. But... The coaching wasn't the best, and that's part of the scheme is the coaching. But I just say I think that a lot of this was again. You'll you'll hear Marco Seppian say it. Bad teams we played, you know, poor team. Yeah, I yeah. can't. No, that, so the Chiefs far. also the Chiefs also played poor teams, you know, and they look, they're every, look, in, everyone right. on their schedule is going to play. Correct, right? That's my point. Teams, so but, you know, but Dak and this uh, and the way he had to overcome to me these coaches that we've had, uh, he's had under him. Or over him to to like tr- tr- like kind of teach him foundational kind of kind of responsibilities to me with Garrett with Lenahan Kellen Moore was a disaster and then you know Schottenheimer fired for outdated offense uh, uh, I'm sorry McCarthy uh, fired for outdated offenses Schottenheimer fired because he he had some real poor offensive coordinating years and uh, with other teams those are the guys Dak's working with yeah so I think truly the biggest Dak tragedy is the fact that we allowed his rookie years to go by without doing something similar to what the Niners did or what, honestly, a lot of teams uh, have been doing in more recent years in the NFL, even before that, right? They're aggressively making moves. They're and building a team around the youth of the quarterback. Yeah, the cheap you know contract. I mean? Exactly. The cheap contract of the quarterback. The second that the Cowboys obviously realized that Romo was hanging up his cleats and that Dak was the guy. Why did the Cowboys basically just sit there and like do nothing? And of course you can make the argument. Well, the Cowboys were in actual cap hell those first few years of Dak's contract. So that, you know, they unfortunately were paying the piper for mistakes. Yeah, in for, days two, past. for two out of the four years. Right. And I'm like, and okay, fair point. But again, they could have signed Dak sooner. Right. Cheaper. They got. I'm just saying. They it's the no same pl- thing yeah. with ha- that's happening with Micah, with right. CD, with you know all these. The only one they managed to kind of do that with was Diggs. 
Yeah, last year. Right? And then he gets hurt, ACL. Mm. But the thing is, is that, uh, well, I agree with you that, the, you know, that, that if the Joneses would have, if they were not sure about Dak, when they, you know, this is like year three for Dak, right? And the Jones is like, he's the Joneses, Steve, Jerry Jones is like, he's the future of this team. He's our franchise quarterback. I'll never forget it. In his third season, he said this. Why didn't he pay him after that and play off that very cheap contract? Why? Yeah, Jerry, Dak was ready to sign for $30 million. D- Jerry said, nah, we want to pay you 28 That's the stupidity of the front office. They let it go forward. And now I went to 32, 33, and then I went to 35, and then I went yeah. to 40. Now, you know what I'm saying? So this is the front office messing up. My thing is, I wouldn't have a problem with them negotiating, but what was their other plan? Dak knew they, they didn't have any other quarterbacks in sight. They didn't have any other play you know plans in sight. It was Dak. They had said to themselves, Dak's our guy. Yet they weren't paying Dak. So Dak's going to he's gonna get the money then if you're going to wait. And that's what the Cowboy, that's what the front office yeah, fucked he, up. He made the smart and calculated risk of saying, well, the Cowboys uh, are going to bet on me. <laughs> and every year, and it worked he, kept, he kept winning it. So. In his favor, at yeah. least on the uh, monetary side of things, yeah. of course. So uh, now I talked to Montana to he said hey, he still no. did nothing with the money. Exactly. So, didn't matter, right? Those two years, we didn't have the Des Bryant and the Tony Romo cap hits. The Jones is like, no, no, no. We got we got Nolan Carroll now from the Eagles. That's scrub. Now, Pioneer said Kellen Moore is going to kick our asses, but I hope I'm so wrong. Yeah, don't worry. I'm not worried about Kellen Moore. The only reason why he'll do a little, maybe he'll do better, he has got a better offense. But they lost some offensive linemen. To me, Jalen Hurts, we're going to be we're gonna really see what Jalen Hurts is about now with Kellen Moore. We're really going to see yeah. some facts Remember, come out. Remember, the that sword cuts both ways. Mm. Kellen Moore might know us and our tendencies very well, but we know his oh, yeah. pretty well. We know him very well. And on top of that, just keep in mind that like, like the cowboy like he has to he, he they're trusting you know their their quarterback Jalen Hurts 50 plus million dollar quarterback in the hands of Kellen Moore like we as cowboy fans know that's not that's a big problem i'm just going to wait and see like he might get some he might beat the the easy team like when people say Dak beats easy teams Dak don't beat it was it was Kellen Moore or the, or the schemes that they're running those were the easy teams that the scheme was winning. It wasn't the quarterback. It was the scheme that was dissecting the shitty teams. I watched the Eagles play well against the, sh- the, good, the, uh, the shitty teams, and against the good teams, they will have struggles, the Eagles. Not because of Jalen Hurts, and, not, and when, he was in, when Kellen Moore was here, it wasn't because of Dak Prescott. I believe it's because of Kellen Moore. Mm. And if you look at Justin, listen to this, guys. Dak Prescott, I want... I want some of you guys to answer this. Why did Dak have his best season in his career in his career last year? The year that Kellen Moore left. Why did Justin Herbert from the Chargers have his worst year in his career? The the first and only year Kellen Moore was there in, 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 with the Chargers. It's the problem is not the quarterback. The problem is the coordinator in this scenario. Marco Sepian and he's the one I want to hear from. Marco Sepian in the house. What do you think about what I just said? And, and again, maybe he just dropped the one two dollar holler. Oh, he said. What did the man say? The front office fucked up. <laughs> say it's not. No so way. How impossible. is that possible? Yeah, that doesn't happen. Not to the Cowboys. Yes, as we know, Jerry Jones has never made a mistake in his <laughs> life before, ever, when it comes to managing this football team. Not even a little mistake. No, not, he's always not right. Not even once. Non non fireable mistakes. It's like meth, right? Not even not even <laughs> once. Listen, the thing is, the, 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 to me, that Kellen Moore is the bigger thorn. And that's why I'm talking about these coaches that Dax had. I'm not trying to, and I'm far from making excuses, but you cannot tell me with a straight face that Jason Garrett, not in the league anymore. Scott Lenahan, his offensive coordinator when he was a rookie, not in the league anymore. You can't tell me that those failures at the foundational level hurts Dak in going forward while Tom Brady had, to, you know, Bill Belichick. And I'm just saying, like, that's one example. Then you got, you know, the next wave of guys, whether it's McCarthy, Schottenheimer, you know, Kellen Moore with, with Schottenheimer. And just my point is that, you know, I'm sorry, Kellen Moore, then Schottenheimer with McCarthy, outdated offenses, you know, fired multiple times. Dak Prescott has to overcome a lot. And he may not be that, he'll never be that, that you know, that, that uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes or, you know, Joe Montana type guy ever. He'll never beat that. Mm. 
But now Jerry Jones said, you know what? We're he believes he is. So now we're going to put it all on Dak's back and take away pieces and make him struggle. It's, you know, he's not going to, it's not going to be a good year for Dak because he's got no help from the front office as far as uh, of the losses that we have Yeah. from this offensive line and throughout this team. So, uh, you know, no running game. You know, we're going to rely on some, some, you know, some, some rookies to come in, undrafted guys from last year to kind of fill in some st- spots on the offensive line, receiver. So, good luck, I guess, for us. Mm. We'll see how we draft. That's the only thing we got in front of us. And a couple after post-draft free agents. So, Jason goes to 85 points. Much love to Marco Sepian. Always repping it here with us. And I'm, I'm going to go. I, I mean, I don't know if there's any, any comments yeah, on that. Yeah, I wanted Dak. to hit up, a hit up of... uh, the chat a little bit here. Because Kevin Bobo said, Cowboy fans don't deserve Dak. Ungrateful Cowboy fans are going to see life with no Dak. Will not be fun. It's going to hurt. Pioneer said, we don't have the defensive guns to stop anybody. Mm. Roland Rodriguez said, MCF, the same front office and GM for the last 30 years without a Super Bowl. But what do you expect? Exactly. It's a clown show, right? In fact, I mean, you guys just prompted me to clown it up here, guys. and uh, Cl- Clown it up. There you go. Clown, Clown show it is. Let's talk about what it really is the issue. Mm, it's not so that. Steve I said, Jerry and Stephen Jones need to have a remember the Titans kind of moment. Cause... <laughs> yeah, right now they're failing us in a big way. Mm. So uh, what's up, Beast Mode? Because he said, life without Dak will be fine, guys. Revelation Journalist also said, Dak is the real offensive coordinator and quarterback. I wish. See, the thing is that if he was, the, if he was actually like the, the Tony Romo mindset, I'd be like, I think Dak would be better. But... I think Dak also has the team awareness that Romo didn't have. So it's like we need to combine both of them together, and, and I think we'll have the guy we need. So, look, the thing is, Dak is a great team guy. He works hard all the time, a leader, but he doesn't take over a game. And Jerry and Steven, especially Jerry, doesn't realize that this is the way Dak is. It's not something that he'll get better with. So Dak, we know who Dak is. He's almost an MVP Quarter, he was second in MVP voting last year. And good teams are bad teams. Trust me, Mahomes played some shitty teams. You know, Jalen right. Hurts played some shitty teams. So we all play shitty teams. And just Dak is, and I say Dak, but I say it's really this coaching, the scheme that works best against shitty teams. That's what happened with Kellen Moore. With the Cowboys, it happened with Kellen Moore with the Chargers. And it's going to happen with Kellen Moore with the Eagles next year. Watch me, mark my words on this. So we'll see what happens. But right now, I look. The clown show is a clown show. We know it. You guys know it. We all know what this is about, and we're ready for it. It's just simple as that. We're not. We're not delusional. We know what's. We know what this front office is about and how they mismanage a lot of shit. Marco Sepian never mismanaging anything. He dropped that five on it. Woo! Much love to him as he. I think he takes Jason Bradford down to eighty points on the stream, boss. What did the man Marco Sepian have to say? He said, "This is the problem. Dak is overrated." but decent enough. Jerry Jones does not get more tools for him nor make arrangements to replace him, and the head coach is overrated. A lot of overrated, I'm hearing, from, uh, from Mr. So, uh, and, and that is, and that, you know, one of those of fundamental problems yeah. that Mark has said as far as what he sees as a problem with our front office, right? That they get a Dak Prescott and delusional. think he's Joe Montana. They get a Jason Garrett or, or <laughs> yeah, a and McCarthy, right. right? And think he's Bill Belichick. And and, and that's you know, and, and, and kind of, but that's exactly, Mark, you're exactly saying, look, he's decent enough. I know what he's saying. Listen, Dak is a top 10 quarterback. It's hard to be a top 10 quarterback in the mm-hmm. NFL. And that is a problem, you can say, because. Well, he's going to have some years. It's going to be a little down, right? So You know, when, Steve when, agrees with you, by the way, saying, facts, I've said that, as in Dak. You know, he's yeah. got to be that dude and take over if it means winning. He's not going to do it. If that's at the expense of the offensive coordinator's design scheme, then oh, well. And I agree. But I yeah. don't think that Dak right. has it in him. That's, we've said this multiple times, right, baby? You've made that he's point. He's just not that type of guy. That's not Dak. And if that means that he's not the quarterback, I mean, he still could win a Super Bowl. But that's not his personality. So a lot of Super people won Super Bowls without having that takeover mindset quarterback. Trent Dilfer but did it. But they also <laughs> had the yes. coaches to. That's the yes. point. They had the coaches to make Someone, it up. Someone, the scheme, somewhere along the yes. line, was that guy Correct. was making those decisions and Correct. was allowed to do so. so we, we don't have anyone like that currently in the building, and Dak's not going to be that and, either. So, like, what the fuck do we do? And also looking at what you know, Mark said here about Dak is overrated. The Joneses blow him up. He's not overrated as a top ten quarterback. He's a top ten quarterback. He's overrated because the Joneses think he's yeah. the top quarterback. That's the problem. So that's problem. That, that's the overrated. Not that Dak's overrated as much as 
the Joneses overrate him way too much, and they don't get tools for him, which is a need for this quarterback. He's not Dan Marino. I mean, maybe he is Dan Marino, but he's not He's not even Dan Marino. He's not uh, Troy Aikman, Joe Montana, or any of the greats, Rodgers, Mahomes. So, and the main thing that Marco Sepian said in his comment was that the head coach is overrated. And that doesn't mean just McCarthy, guys. It means Jason Garrett. It means the offensive, I'm saying it, it means the offensive coordinators as well. Lenahan, trash. Outdated offense, crap. Romo changed the plays on freaking uh, Shanahan. I mean, not Shanahan, but Lenahan. He changed it because he he took over the game. He's like, fuck, I ain't calling that shit play. Dak didn't know. Any, he's like, I got, I got, I'm doing what the, I'm a rookie. I'm doing what he's telling me to do. You know, it's it, when Lenahan got there, Romo was there for for a decade already in Dallas. As the, you know, he he was running the show. You put the offense around me. You know, that's the way it was with Romo. But when Dak got there, it's like Dak's a rookie, and Lenahan's been there for two years. This is the Dallas Cowboys, you know? So he had to kind of play his role there, you know? And he, and he, he yeah. himself being normal, his normal self is not the Romo takeover type guy, right? Exactly. So that is the is the issue. The foundation, like Mark said, the coaches are overrated, and these are the guys that are coaching Dak. You know, Lenahan, overrated, crap, outdated offense, coaching Dak. Garrett, forget about it. Both these guys are not coaching anywhere in the NFL right now. Again, you got Kellen Moore, who's just the Joneses, you know, their their golden child, which failed again. Like Garrett failed again with uh, Kellen Moore. He was coaching Dak. This is the failures coaching Dak is why Dak had to over Dak overcame this shit. He's still a top ten quarterback, second in MVP voting last year. Hard teams, easy teams. I don't give a goddamn because all these coach, all these teams, all these quarterbacks played easy teams. As well, and had good numbers. Not just as good, not as good as Dak did. And that's, I think, more to the scheme than it is Dak. Just better against bad teams. Not Dak as a whole offense. The offense is better as a scheme against poor defenses. Why? Because the offensive scheme works better <laughs> when you have an, you know, a, a worse defense. The quarterback is just playing the role in the scheme. That's what Dak is doing. Mark another one, two, three, four, five on it. Woo. What did the man say? In my opinion, you don't pay any player to reset the market who is not one who generally does not take over games top 10 does not translate to defenses fearing his arm so basically like agree, you don't no, pay any yeah. player like a market resetting right. value if he can't take over a they're game. that type of right guy. He's, so you're saying he's that guy right so right now there's like a lot of resetting value quarterbacks right now mark in the nfl that haven't won you know, can Lamar Jackson take over a it's game? It's not even about, that's what I'm saying. It's not yeah, even about I mean, winning or not. Because obviously, yeah, if you're yeah, getting exactly. paid like that, you've won, you've done something right. That's, right. That's it's not taking over games. Argue. And I think we're the same exactly. page. Mark and I are on the same page. Because I've always, that has always been my complaint about Dak Prescott, guys. You can check, baby, have I not said that? Oh, that yeah. Dak never takes over these games. And I, and I, and I go always back to Amari Cooper in his fifth or sixth game with the Cowboys when he played the Eagles. And he had to, like, Dak, it took Dak two and a half quarters to, finally go away from the game plan and we got a touchdown that was because of amari cooper he came here he's like i don't know what dak's doing because he keeps listening to shit to shanahan i mean to uh to, to scott lenahan and he keeps listening to him and not seeing the goal route is right here open and it's not dak's fault it's the coach Dak just follows the coaching and that's to his detriment sometimes and that's the thing he needs to take over i've been saying that for years i know he's not going to be the guy that takes over he's not Dak's not that quarterback the joneses think he is and that's the problem so you got shitty coaches yep. with a player that is can be can take you to a Super Bowl like Dak Prescott. Shitty coaches that do that 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 sometimes hinder his progression. That Dak had to overcome the shitty coaching, shitty front office, which maybe the shittiest of all is right here the clown show. So he had to overcome no uh, you know at times he had help he had good players at times he had no help. In his second year, I mean he had fucking Cole Beasley as his number one receiver. Just saying, we had we had Terrence Williams and 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 her and what's his name? Uh, when I broke his leg, it wasn't Hurts. So what's his name? No, um, yeah, was Hurts it? broke his leg. I'm talking about our receiver. Yeah, I forgot his name. We we got look. Oh we, yeah, we, Al, wasn't it Hurts? Allen. Allen was it? Allen. 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 No, I don't know. Now I I'm, I forgot now. But either way, the point is that we had a real Hearns. Su- there you go, Hearns. Allen Hearns. Yeah. Okay. Right? Isn't that his name? Am I misremembering? Yeah, I don't know why I feel it's not not fitting right with me. Either way, my point yeah, is yeah, Hearns broke his ankle. Yeah, like, yeah, it was like in the, the, the yeah. But my point is that we had no receivers 
Like, that's what they gave Dak to work with. It's just embarrassing to me that the Cowboys, you know, they have no receivers. The second year either, right? And, and until that, that bye week, we got Amari Cooper. And then we went, we went on after we lost, after the bye week, to the Tennessee Titans, we went on a five-game winning streak. Put us in the forefront and got us in the playoffs. Because we got Amari Cooper. We got help for Dak. Now Dak can play. Because yep. we got ourselves a... And, and again, Dak was just following the script. Yeah, he follows Hearn, the script to it a... It was Hearns, by the okay, way. Okay, Hearns. Alan Hearns. So again, he, Dak follows the script too much. To mu- Roma went away from it because it wasn't when things weren't working. But then he's a gunslinger and throwing an interception. Dak doesn't go away from it enough. And I've always said that. So we are on the same page there, uh, Mr. Mark Hosepian, when it comes to you know uh, Dak... I think the the baseline is that the the front office is overrating him. The front office overrates the coaches they have coaching him. The front office overrates you know the the moves they make. They're the biggest overrated fucking group in the whole fucking world. Is the guy in front office, and that's our biggest failure, unfortunately. And the foundation it's a foundational with teaching Dak with good coaches. Mm-hmm. Foundational having good front office to help Dak. Yeah. By the way, Nothing. beast mode. Uh, just I, I do want to address this comment just because I've seen him say it a few times that basically the the heard that Jerry isn't making any moves because he's about to sell the team. I'm praying for that, guys. I'm praying for Jerry, it too, but it, no yeah. Jones descendant in our lifetime is ever going to sell this team. We we don't know that, but I think that is completely. Just bullshit. So don't get your hopes high that Jerry Jones is going to sell the team. I do not believe that's happening. But, you know, maybe he has a change. Maybe in his old age he has a change of heart and he sells it. I would love that. Don't expect it. Do not expect that. I, I That yeah. is a, quite the level yeah. of optimism I have not been able to reach. Yeah. Anyway, it's like a let pi- me it's shout a, out. It's a pipe dream, right? Another mahalo hey, hey. to the man Mark Hovsepian. He's moving Thank up his board, so much. actually. Yeah, he's moving on up. Jason Renfro, by the way, repping it with 70 points yes. on the stream boss. You know, Zach Martin style. Yeah, you know it. So thank you, Mark. He said, the problem is when Jerry Jones makes zero effort to get mm. a replacement, Dak holds all the cards. Mm. That's, if Jerry yeah. Jones pays him now, he just screws us. No free agents to improve us. You know, no free agents to improve us, you know, left to get. So. Yeah. And that is that is my point. Trey Lance is not going to scare Dak Prescott. We have no other. We're not going to pick a quarterback in the draft. If we do, I guess I guess that's it for Dak. Then you know what I'm saying. Like, like to me, it's like there's not many options the Cowboys have. The front office, it's all in Dak's hands. If Dak goes somewhere else, Dak's still getting sixty million. He he's cool with that. But we're paying right now on it, and it's a, and the Jones feels feel like they either try to right a, a wrong by going more all in on Dak. But making it harder on Dak, it's going to make Dak look worse. It makes them look worse. It doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense with this front office. Be real about it. Your front 81 wants that Jerry will sell the team to Steven. Yeah. Oh, James Hurst said the one to sell the Cowboys is going to be Jerry's grandson or his great grandson. Exactly. So and that, that's why I said, like, well, by, by the dead. time that that happens, yeah, like, I'll also be, be an old six lady. feet underground <laughs> or, you know, whatever the heck they're. You even know who the Cowboys are. I mean, a hologram somewhere. <laughs> who knows? Dial it into a computer simulation. Oh, man. Let me see. A revelation journalist, what's up? Let me see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't think Dak's finding any receivers out of anywhere. Well, let's keep let's offense. keep this a quickie. And it was because, Alan Hearns, by the yes, way. Yes, Alan Hearns. Let's keep this a quickie and end it with one last thing here, baby. And uh, I want everybody also to give me your two cents on things. Of course. Like our guy here, J. J- Ron Curse, who, by the way... You know, we, we talk about all these guys that we have as far as um, free agents that we've lost. Yeah, our free agent tracker. Boom, there it is. All the guys we've lost, all the guys that we have uh, we have returned. And then you have Eric Kendricks, the only addition. But when you have J. Ron Kirst, I only put him up here for a quick moment. Kind of a last-minute brainstorming session here. Because it's really interesting the fact that J. Ron Kirst is still a free agent. Why? So, J. Ron Kirst is past. Might be the reason he ends up staying in Dallas. Huh. So let me explain. Still unsigned as a free agent, right? Curse might, I mean, again, not, not, I'm not saying there's any word that he's coming back to the Cowboys, but could he? I think that his time in Minnesota, guys, he was with a certain coach named Mike Zimmer when he was in Minnesota. Mike Zimmer is now our defensive coordinator. So safety J. Ron Curse, one of the few Cowboy free agents still left. I think we have three guys left in the open market right now. It's McEwen. J. Ron Curse, and who's the other guy? I think there's one other guy out there. Either way, 
the longer he goes on sign, the, the chances that he could come back to Dallas increases. One of the factors that could help Curse come back on a, I would say, even team-friendly deal would be that he has, again, a, a potential uh, you know, cheerleader on his team, on the Cowboys right now, which is Mike Zimmer, who was his first NFL head coach when he was with the Minnesota Vikings. Yep. Zimmer brought him in. No surprise that Curse has yet to get a new contract from the Cowboys, though. Cowboys are stocked at safety. We're not using, we're not using three safeties this yeah. year. We only need two with Zimmer's defense. So Malik Hooker and Donovan Wilson are the, the two starter safeties. But we also have Marquise Bell as going to be moving full-time safety. We know what he was able to do last year. Pretty damn good as a run support type box linebacker, right? Wanye Thomas, a name we like, number 30. He's also another. We got good starters and good depth at safety. So if, if we even kept a fifth guy, it still would be a special teams baller like Israel Mukuamu. Those are five safeties. We even have room for J. Ron Curse. So he, uh, again, he unfortunately is in that weird spot where, yeah, it seems like he might price himself out of being here. Right now, especially he's, yeah, I with mean, our current depth. Yeah, but the thing is, that he, not even price up being here is that nobody else is signing him. So why is that? And then the Cowboys, do they do they even want him back, even if he's cheap? Because okay. we have five safeties. So Curse. He turns, I think he turned 30 years old in February. Okay. Already looking, you looked at last year, he was already a step slower. Mm-hmm. You see the age is catching up a little bit. But he's he was, a, he was a diamond in the rough find. Dan Quinn really coached him up. And, you know, going from an offseason afterthought in 2021 to being one of the defensive leaders for the Cowboys for the last three seasons. So he's also a leader. Gives a little veteran depth there for us if we were to pick him up. Uh and again, you can look at some of these guys as like, like Marquise Bell can maybe go help at linebacker a little more. Maybe Curse can help at linebacker in some ways if they're if if he's slowing down. But the point is this he got a late start to becoming an impact player in his career. But now he's slowing down as he's getting into like the middle and later point of his career, right? The longer he remains a free agent, Curse, Curse's asking price is going down. So it's possible that a coach like Dan Quinn, who's familiar with him already in Washington, or a coach like Add and dirty in Seattle, they might be waiting till after the draft to see if they have a need for a safety. Okay. So after the draft, he might be t- picked up by, by again, this hurts our compensatory picks, but right now he's not gonna get that many, that many, uh that much money to even really affect the comp yeah. the comp picks uh I was so gonna say, I so, think that that's a okay with me in this situation. Well, the point is that we don't get back even a seventh rounder. If he gets, we, we get nothing back if he gets signed after the draft. Remember that, guys. After the draft, there's no comp, uh, you know, equation anymore there. So, again, the, those two teams, Seattle and Washington, could be a team that, that will pick them up after they see what they have or don't have after the draft. Uh, but the Cowboys, if we wanted to offer them a chance to return at some point, even if it's just to compete with the younger guys, we can get them on a veteran salary benefit contract deal that's what i always say vsb you get him for like 1.3 1.7 and he'll get an extra he'll get like two and we'll only pay like 1.3 on the cap do we need that that's the question so compete again how much is guaranteed a lot of questions would come into play there but he would definitely be you could you know we've had a little injury you know malik hooker has a lot of injury issues in his past malik hooker Knock on wood, it stays healthy the way he's yeah. been for us. He's Donovan, been Don, holding up so far. Donovan Wilson is a big hitting guy, but he can get hurt any moment when it was big hits. If he hit, you know what I'm saying? He's been banged up as well. Of course, you got Wanya Thomas and Marquise Bell, but wouldn't you like to have a veteran that we know can start and play in there and definitely, you know, like like AJ Ron Curse? So you can look at Curse as being a, a valuable asset in that way. If you get him on the cheap, he's like a, a he's like a, a veteran that you're getting for very cheap in that kind of hybrid linebacker slash safety position. So I'm just throwing it out there. He's still available. He's still floating around. An option for the Cowboys to increase depth there. And you got to remember, guys, we don't know if, you know, probably some of the coaches leaving last year, they're they're probably not chanting out, hey, let's get J- the next, you know, the new coaches are not saying, hey, we want J. Ron Curson here. But he got Mike Zimmer in the house. And Mike Zimmer knows him and brought him in. When Curse was a seventh, he was a seventh round draft pick for the Vikings. J. Ron Curse. Yeah. In 2016. Zimmer was the head coach for the Vikings. He made a decision. And he played under Zimmer for four years in Minnesota. 
Um, all four years were under Zimmer, uh, but he was only as a playing as a backup and a special team, uh, you know, player. Never as a starter in the Mike Zimmer defense. And he didn't blossom. Yeah, you know, he went to the Lions after that. He didn't blossom until he hooked up with Quinn and Big D in Dallas. Now maybe Zimmer, looking at the film, can see how you can use someone like uh, J. Ron Curse properly in his defensive scheme. But we know that you know Zimmer now has a voice with the Cowboys front office. We got we you know they at least, he at least got you know was able to influence that one addition, linebacker Eric Kendricks to our team. So that's a good thing there, I guess. But. While Kendricks was a star for for Zimmer in the past and feels a much needed you know off off the ball linebacker for the Cowboys roster, Curse was just a depth guy for the Vikings in Minnesota, you know in Minnesota uh, when he was there, and the Cowboys probably don't have room for him now at this point. He's again his role under Dan Quinn was a hybrid linebacker on passing downs, which is a position that's unlikely to kind of transfer and transition into into Zimmer's scheme. So he doesn't really have a fit. Because we have too many safeties, but he also doesn't really fit because the scheme does not fit him under Zimmer. So mm. the one thing he does have is that Zimmer was the coach for who brought him brought Curse into the NFL, uh, and for a seventh round pick, think about it, to see all four years of his rookie deal with the same team with Zimmer means that he must have liked them enough that you know keep a seventh round pick for four years in the mix. That's a that's an accomplishment I would I would assume. Um, most seven rounders don't even make the roster, and if Zimmer has you know some kind of connection for Curse, he might find a way of keeping him on for the right price. So, listen, it takes two people, two sides here. So, Jaron Curse got to come back for a cheap deal. He's got to want to come back for a cheap deal if nobody else wants him. Uh, he doesn't want to come back to Dallas. Then that's his. Then 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 he'll go find his playing somewhere else because he he might not want to come back to be Donovan Wilson's backup. That's another thing. He don't want to go downhill here. So. Again, you know, he's. we'll see. We don't know if he's turned down a contract from the Cowboy front office already, a cheap one. We don't know. Uh, hoping for more money or opportunity, better opportunities elsewhere. But if he is still a free agent after the draft, I think that's when the Cowboys and teams like Dan Quinn, Washington, or Adam Dirty in Seattle, uh, you know, as a defensive coordinator there, that's when you'll see if, if those teams or the Cowboys – like Mike Zimmer, connection with Curse, you know, you know who, which team does choose to put Curse on their roster for how much and who's willing to do that. So I think, you know, you got those, like I said, Quinn, head coach of Washington, Adam Dirty, the defensive coordinator in Seattle, or defensive, uh, one of the second in command there behind, uh, I think defensive coordinator in Seattle. And then, of course, Zimmer, who knows him well, our defensive coach here in Dallas. So, that's my little quick breakdown on J. Ron Curse. Now, the one what do you guys thing, think uh, about I'm this? I'm seeing a lot uh, from a few people in the chat, and I'm going to try to hit like a, mm-hmm. a few comments yeah. in this same vein, right? Pioneer said, Curse is a great Madden player because he's a hybrid. I see you said, if the new, you know, signed linebacker still got some juice, you know, then we got overshown too. So, mm. you know, basically saying that he'd rather have Curse play linebacker than, yep. you know, uh, safety. Kurt than uh, 14. What's his face? Marquise Bell. There we go. Yeah, I, I agree. And Bell's going back to safety. Yeah, you know, so that's you know, so you can yeah, say he could Kurt be our has the the size to at least see. Curse you know, to me could be like the replacement for Bell. When Beast Bell goes Mo, back to safety, they Beast switch Mo spots. Disagree, saying Curse is trash. He's a one year wonder. Mm. Overshone will replace him. I mean, I do think that uh, he's going downhill, but I don't think he was a one year wonder. And Le Quinn, he had three good years with the Cowboys. So this last year was his worst. I would say out of the mm-hmm. three with the Cowboys. So, His first was the best, obviously. Now, Seabass is saying, I wonder how Zimmer's defensive schemes have fared against Shanahan's and LaFleur's. Who, Zimmer's? We, talk, uh, we talked about this, actually. One of the best. One of the best. He's one of the best against the rest of the league and also one of the best against Shanahan and, uh, and what was the other one he had said? LaFleur. Yeah. LaFleur. Well, I know definitely the Shanahan the, uh, offenses. Uh, Zimmer, I think only Belichick and one other coach. Was over him in the sense of uh, the best in uh, against Shanahan uh, defenses, or, or was it Vrabel? And I don't, I don't know who it was, but either way, there's only one guy I think in front of him on Shanahan defenses. I think it was Mike Vrabel, but Vrabel was horrible against all the other all the other offenses in the NFL. While Zimmer, one of the best, he I think he was second best or behind Belichick as one, as the overall best defensive coach in the NFL. 
well, against other NFL schemes. Against Shanahan's schemes, he was like second so or third. So to me, Shanahan is the best of both worlds. So he does well. I don't, I don't, I don't know about Lafleur, but again, Shanahan, uh, Shanahan is one of the better coaches that were left as a you know as a as I say yeah. free agent coach. But he was one of the remaining coaches that were left that would uh, fit. That mold there, mm-hmm. it can do kind of can do well against both styles of offenses, Shanahan and the rest of the league offenses. So that's all the co- comments there, baby. We are done. It's the quickie, and it was a longie. <laughs> yeah, at least in that about that specific topic. Yeah. Yes. So with that said, though, an hour show in the books, guys. You see the moves. Probably not going to make many different moves there. So enjoy. Uh, bobblehead nights over here. <laughs> Tomorrow is a new week, a new stream. A new day, but it's a new week, guys, and we we got our champions to shout out right now. And you know the names. You know why they came. You see them right there. The sponsor of the week and the Cash App King, Harley Dad. Much love to him. Jason Renfro still going to hold it down to tomorrow with 70 points in the stream, boss. And he's taken over as the, well, let me just say this, Skeptical Fan is the champion of the gifting membership board. But he is passing over the award there, the crown, to Jason Ramfro because he's won 5-1 to one this week in the gifting side of things. So congrats to Jason Ramfro there. And when it comes to the cash app and the overall board, Harley Dad cannot outdo Mr. McLovin, who is the champion. Six out of the last eight weeks, the domination from McLovin in the cash app and or the sponsor of the week, the man is dominated, and he's back again. So congrats to him. Congrats to Jason Ramfro, the gifting champion. And thank you, Harley Dad and Skeptical, for representing those boards properly, as as an MC effort does. So appreciate you guys there. Appreciate you, all you guys dropping the love from above tonight. Darren Posey back in the membership in the Navy Blue Crew. We, of course, had Jason Revel dropping some love as well. And Marco Seppin, who dropped a bunch of love throughout the night here, trickling the, the love through. So appreciate you and everybody here, not just here, but also the After Dark session, which obviously will be starting a little later than expected. So uh, that will be pushed back, and I'll be doing that in a couple of minutes as well. So, baby, um, that's all on my side. Let's do the final shout-outs in there. Of course. We have Chata Montana to wait. Much love. Steve S., shout-out to you. Brandon J.S., Brandon James, of course. A big mahalo. To Marco Sepian, who's a five dollar holler you're gonna see drop through Ooh, here in just a second. Much love. We'll roll back to that here shortly. Mr. C Bass, of course. Much love. You'll be hearing from him here in just a few days. Yes, so, you will. Pioneer, thanks for rocking with us. I see you. We see you too. <laughs> Let me see. Lost in translation. Much love to you. Thanks for coming in here. Griff 181, peace and love to you. Beast mode representing. Dallas Cowboy 92, you already know. Yeah. Chalk Time on 10808. You know Thank it. you for taking time to come and chill here with yeah, us. Hey. James Her, hello. Have a great night, Revelation Journalist. We have Thomas Garrett, the Superior Garrett, superior. of course. Superior. Dallas Cowboy 92, thank you for that uh, assistance there <laughs> with the name of the player. Oh. I couldn't remember. And there's Marco Seppi, that's when you said, baby, the drop has dropped. And there it Officially. is. Officially. He put that five on it. Thank you, Mark. Say? Big Mahalo. He said, overrated coaches and guys get exposed when you play good teams. Yep. 90 points on Washington means jack shit. When you get 10 against San Francisco, yep. Mahomes plays bad teams, but then he goes to the Super Bowl. Yeah, he doesn't dominate the bad teams the way Dak does or the way that our, our offensive coaches do. But you but know he what? Do- he's obviously more overall consistent. He is, but he's also so, got better coaches Yeah, as well, right? Far better. It's a combination. He's a better quarterback than Dak, of course, Mahomes. But he also got much better coaching than Dak has ever had. Let's be honest, much better. So imagine if Dak had those coaches. How good could Dak be? How good could the offense be? You know, not even Dak, the offense. Just saying, if you had some other names than Jason Garrett, Kellen Moore, Scott Lenahan, Schottenheimer, McCarthy. I'm just saying, Dak would be a lot better. He could be a lot worse, oh, yeah. but he'd be a lot better. We'll see how good Hurts does with uh, Kellen Moore this year. Because Herbert had his worst season ever. With Kellen Moore. Yes. Dak had his best season ever without Kellen Moore. And Shanahan. And Garrett. But McLovin, Rolando Rodriguez, <laughs> Stephen yeah. White. Yeah, Freedom First was first. Yeah, Daniel Berry Sports. Much love to everybody. Catch us on the After Dark, 2.30 a.m. now. I moved it back half an hour. Need a little break. Maybe a little food. And maybe a little little partying for a couple hours. Uh, and then we're going to call it a night here all around. FC uh, On this channel and After Dark, mm-hmm. baby. Appreciate everybody on the house here dropping the, the knowledge all night long. 
dropping the love throughout the week. The last two weeks where we got our champions and we got halfway through a month. We got, you know, a couple more weekly winners to crown. Maybe we'll take care of all that in the future. Tomorrow, a new day, a new week, a new stream. And we'll see if maybe the Cowboys make any moves. We'll see what happens. If for some reason they don't, you'll see us for sure at the latest on Tuesday. I think. Tuesday? Yeah. Probably tomorrow you'll see us. And then Wednesday. That's probably what's going to be the schedule for us. We'll, hey, anything drops in the Cowboys, we'll let you know. And we'll discuss it tonight. You know, on the, at, in that night, we'll discuss it at night. So we can all give our thoughts on the things. But right now, the Cowboys aren't doing anything. And so we are currently done with another Cowboy Quickie here mm-hmm. at MCF. Baby, as we roll out of here, remind everybody what we got to why we do this here on the nightly. It's that navy blue, that silver too, and that star over everything. Win, lose, or draw, good, bad, or ugly. Here in this channel, we always, always rep that star over everything. And almost seven years here. On YouTube, on these YouTube streets here. My Cowboys family never forget the number one thing here now and forever. As always, go Cowboys. Let's get that six and beyond. Thank you all for dropping your knowledge in the chat all night long. The last two weeks worth been crazy when it comes to the drops of love from above. So thank you guys, whether it's here or the After Dark sessions. Can't do this without your love and support. And uh, as we clock out and drop out for the night and for the last two weeks of MCF streams, as we relock and reload for a whole new week tomorrow, let everybody know what we got to do, baby, before we drop out of here for the night. We got to drop the beat. Oh, yeah. Beat's been dropped. It's a wrap here on MCF, my Cowboys family. Well, we got After Dark session coming soon. So prepare you guys. Uh, if you guys do drop in there, you know, you might see us there today. You might see us there tomorrow chilling and hanging out either way if you know you know you gotta go find it guys i hope you enjoyed our wrap up i guess you can see our weekend wrap up for our cowboys and uh you know all the news info and updates here on another cowboys chat slash cowboy quickie it's done it's a, it's a done deal guys and i think we had some good discussions some of dax foundational coaches been been issues let's be honest well, you can go back to the stream and check that out if you missed it. Of course, here on MCF, it's always about that navy blue, that silver too, and that star over everything. Never, ever forget the number one thing right here in my Cowboys family. Much love to everyone in the house. Can I do this without you all? Don't forget, if you're watching this now on a replay, leave a comment down below. But if you're watching it now or on a replay, make sure you hit that like button. It helps the analytics. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're new. Keep growing the channel. The family members here and of course hit that notification bell put it to all videos so you know we're going live you can also know we're going live through our discord or of course any social media all social media twitter x all that stuff at my cowboys family that's a wrap here guys thank you all appreciate the last two weeks of rocking it new week starts tomorrow be safe stay safe we'll see you then peace and never ever forget go cowboys Monk on the beat.